Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So what we are looking at here is the waves sample. Um, and you can see it here. Um, and we are scanning an area up here using the mapping area. And you can see these waves here. And we are looking for any strike marks and so forth. So because it's a curved sample, areas will be out of focus. So uh, these areas are relatively in focus and the sample areas over here are increasingly out of focus, but it's still going to give us a ability to look around the sample. Now, before I actually start doing EDS on here, I'm seeing some very interesting features, which we are going to take a closer look at. And up here, you can see what appears to be a close cluster of strike marks, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, there are quite a few other ones here, and they tend to have a central spot in them. So like you can see here, and we, we'll image this better. A central spot here, central spot here. Um, so this is already quite exciting to me. You can see, again, a simple uh, strike mark there. There are also some what may be pairs uh, here and here. So this is a, maybe a heart shaped with a center point here and center point here. And over here, we've got something that really does look like a pair that's struck with our Ukanavasara here and the two points there and the flow pattern coming in. So it's already looking very, very interesting. Uh, we'll see if there's anything in terms of elemental interest. Um, but these do look like exotic vacuum objects, uh, ball lightning, uh, sometimes called uh, condensed plasmoids or plasmoids. Um, so there's quite a lot. And by doing this mapping first, we can actually get an overview of the area for study. And then we can select particular parts. And then what I can do is I can take a high fidelity macro image and overlay that and we can see the color uh, with the elemental makeup and uh, produce quite a nice set of images. There are these splat areas here. So um, I expect most of this to be iron oxide, to be fair. Um, these areas lighter will have heavier elements in them. So this should have heavier element on this side, probably iron rich, and this should be lighter elements, and I expect this to be carbon on this side. Okay. Now, in Leclerc's work, he said that if you had over 55% carbon, it would start synthesizing heavier elements. And of course, one of the elements you do synthesize in these processes is iron, but unfortunately, that is something that is in abundance in this stainless steel, so we can't really use that as a marker for transmutation. Here's a rather nice Evo-looking structure here. Um, so it would be great if we saw some um, titanium. That would be something of great interest to me, um, because whilst there's many ways to get to titanium, if you work through the fusion fission tables at uh, nanosoft.co.nz that was programmed by Philip Power based on Alexander Parkmov data. Um, one potential path is to fuse isotopes of carbon and oxygen to get titanium and precisely in the ratio COO as in CO2. So finding titanium on this sample, particularly finding titanium on this sample in these potential EVO strike mark structures would be a huge win. There's no guarantee that will happen, but uh, I'm just laying it out there before we actually have a look. So that is the story so far. So in maybe five, 10 minutes, uh, this will have concluded, hopefully sooner, and we can start having a look at the actual sample. In fact, it looks like it's just finished and it's going to composite these things together and then we can start looking around it with some um, analysis. So what we'll do is we'll take some high resolution images of a couple of these spots and then we will switch over to EDS and do some 
elemental analysis. All very exciting. I'm just trying to get a feel for things that I may be interested in looking at. Interesting, look at this plate. Within the plate there's lots of, or well, this kind of deposited layer there are, mm, is that a flux loop? Yeah. What is this structure? That might need to be imaged higher res. So what we can do when we've got this map here, is we can go to a particular area here, and uh, look at this revisit here, but unfortunately um, we cannot do it whilst it's compositing this image together. So it's just going to take a little while to conclude this and then we'll be able to have a look. This looks like a heavy element. Is that iron? Is it something else? Who knows? Now, there do seem to be some balls here. What is this? That could be very interesting. Is that a crenellated, iron-rich, oxygen-rich ball? If it is, then we are definitely in the realm of exotic vacuum objects. So I'm tempted to even look at that as a first thing. So I need to be patient, though, for this to conclude its scanning. Is this little blob? Is it just a blob or is it something more interesting? What is this structure here? Just have to be patient whilst it's stitching all these things together. Just the way it is. This is an interesting. Is this a pair over here? I don't know. I'm eager to start. Then, oh, it seems to have frozen, which means it's probably writing the file. And then, oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, let's. Where's where's that little sphere now we had? <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> have I lost it? Where is it? It's uh, kind of one I want to look at first. Where was it? Was it up here? This looks like another sphere here. Uh, there may be many. Was that it? Possibly. Is that the one we were looking at? I don't know. Not sure it was actually. I think it was over here. Uh huh. Have we got iron rich crenellated microspheres? Is it this one? I don't know. That's another one. Where was the one we saw earlier? <laughs> this is why it's quite important to uh, find the one you want to look at and have a good look at it. Okay. Where was it? Was it here? No. <laughs> uh, Malcolm said, oh, I can give you very large samples. Uh, you know, let's make them two inches square. And I'm thinking, it's very, very big when you put it on the SEM. <laughs> it's like a, a map of a country. Uh, so sometimes it's not always the best thing to have a very, very large sample. Uh, uh, am I going to go for this one? This one here? This one that's got a little bit of a channel going on? I don't know. Let, let's go and revisit that. So we can go to revisit. 
and we can go here and we can go auto contrast here and some auto focus and see what we have is it of anything of interest Ooh, well there's nice kind of little crystals oh my god have we found an iron rich crenelated microsphere i think we have guys i think we have first time <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> look at it look at it <laughs> oh yes oh dum dum mama Right, okay, so we'll do an auto contrast on this. It definitely looks like it might be. Right, so is this iron and oxygen rich? Maybe. Oh, I think we found an iron oxygen crenelated microsphere. Wow, 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 wow. This is just awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see these in all of these systems. And here we have it in Malcolm Bendel's plasmoid generator. I'm going to take a very nice picture of that. And I'm going to take it because it's the first one we've seen at Stupid Res. And uh, there we go acquiring image well how about that that was easy wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> oh no the beams caused it to fly these balls do fly okay all right well that's why you capture it on video the ball has flown <laughs> oh no okay so we've lost that ball the ball there was a ball there and it's now gone okay so we <laughs> we need to go and find another one um, okay, well, it bored a channel through there. You all saw it. Uh, we saw these balls. Uh, they would sometimes fly about uh, in the Vega Valley. So that's where it was. It was in this, I think it was actually sat in this area here. Ah, there's another, there's a little bitty one there, right? So we've got one, I think, at a different scale here. So that's a really small one. Hardly worth it. <laughs> Let's go and find another big ball. But that, that for me is absolutely awesome. First time, bang, and we see it. So there, there's the historical image. that We know it was there, so we need to find something similar order of magnitude to that. And I think we'll probably find a bunch of these iron-rich crenelated microspheres. So we'll go here, revisit, and we'll go back under here. Is that the puppy? What have we got? Is that an iron rich crenelated microsphere? It's not a very big one. I think we can do better than that, can't we? But let's see. See what it is when we focus in on it. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh dear. Can you see what it is yet? Oh, it's, it's definitely one of these objects. Yeah, it's a little one. Uh, it's about three microns across. Still a thing of great beauty. Can, can we image this? This is number two. Number two. Uh, let's bring the brightness down a little. Uh, not too much. And a little bit more contrast. Yeah, no, no, maybe not that much. So this is an itty bitty one. So this would be the magnetic core of a plasmoid. And I would expect that this is iron oxide. Can we image this? This is not very big, so... We're quite close in, so I'm not going to image that so big. Let's see. see. Let's see if this one jumps when I hit it with a lot of electrons. Otherwise, we might have to go down to five kilo electron volts to image these to prevent them from jumping. Let's see what happens. Is it going to jump? Are you ready to jump? Are you going to jump? No jumpy jumpy so far. This is awesome. So, yes, it's iron. Yes, there is iron in the device. But in my view, where we see these systems in other systems, 
this could be iron that is synthesized uh, by the exotic vacuum object process, the fractal toroidal moment. And this is the magnetic core of the structure that does the work. Really rather lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that. So I think because we've got this rather beautiful image here, we, are, we will switch the beam energy up a bit uh, to 15 kilo electron volts, and we will actually take an SEM of that just so that we know if we are talking about what we think we're talking about. Okay. And we will start, uh, we need to get rid of those. New. And... Uh, And that's slightly off. And we will call this um, second sphere. <laughs> uh, if I didn't have caps lock on. Just check I'm recording. Wouldn't want to lose this for the world. Right, so we will take a point sample in this possibly, possibly, let's see, if it's an iron oxygen rich crenelated microsphere, about three microns across. Oh, look at that. It is the classic ratio. It's iron and oxygen and carbon. There we go. Well, isn't that unsurprising? Really rather predictable, isn't it? Wow, wow, it is sulfur. Look at that, that yellow is not iron oxide. It's calcium, oxygen and sulfur, calcium. Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Look, 10, nearly 11% atomic concentration, 16% by weight is sulfur in this thing here. It really is sulfur and calcium. Calcium is essentially the last uh, pure conjugate, alpha conjugate nuclei. And you have by weight nearly 27% calcium. And you have all of this oxygen here. Obviously there's gonna be oxygen in the system but sulfur is the fusion of two oxygens. Now, there may be sulfur in the fuel, <clears throat> and I would therefore choose to do experiments with zero sulfur fuels and see if the same thing occurs. But that yellow stuff is sulfur. It is sulfur-rich, 16.8%. And in fact, it's not really iron oxide. It has only 1.5% iron in this stuff. So what is this crystal over here? Let's have a look at that. Well, again, this, it, this is very high in calcium. It has quite a high proportion of sulfur. So this is really, really rather special. I think this is conclusive, in my view, already, uh, that this is doing the same coherent matter nuclear reactions as a result of the fractal toroidal moment, this here would be the magnetic core of a ball lightning equivalent structure. And you are getting the classic synthesized elements, sulfur, calcium, and iron, but iron is obviously in the system um, and potentially sulfur is too. This is just awesome. And look at the clarity on that. It is really clear what you're looking at there. Very, very clear peaks. Very conclusively clear peaks. 
Um, so uh, I am going to do a map of that. And it should be fairly clear what we see as it builds that map. Very much an iron sphere. The salt is everywhere in this zone. These brighter blobs here look like almost miniature exotic vacuum objects that are kind of bound onto this. So they actually may be heavier elements or they might just be more pure iron. So over this whole sample area, again, it's showing this sort of 16.5% sulfur so far, 25.6% calcium. Uh, now, the question is, is the calcium coming from the water? I mean, again, you would have to use deionized water. Uh, so deionized water and no sulfur Fuel would be the thing that I would choose to um, further test this. But what we do know is that um, that calcium, sulfur, and iron are things that, and oxygen are things that are created by this process. If we are safe in assuming that this is also. Um, the same process going on. But this is fantastic, fantastic initial finding within seconds of doing uh, EDS on this first sample from the inside of the outside of the large Perkins attached um, thunderstorm generator that ran in Melbourne and was brought to the UK and Malcolm had the courage, based on the macro photography we took a couple of weeks ago, to look at this with the um, SEM. And uh, here we have a phenomenal result, in my view. Yet another system producing an iron-rich crenellated microsphere. So we have nickel here, 1%, of course, um, that is another element that you might find in stainless steel. It's only just about coming in. So this is our oxygen, that is our calcium. Calcium is everywhere in these crystals. The sulfur is everywhere in these crystals. Of course, the iron is specifically in this structure and these fluffy structures over here. There's a very high concentration carbon here. This is interesting. We'll find out whether that's relevant moving on. The nickel is also seems to be co-located with the iron degrees. And it does look like these balls attached, the lighter balls, might have a higher concentration uh, actually, that's just changed. It's, it disappeared, the nickel. But um, this is what you happen sometimes with uh, uh, EDS is it determines it's not so relevant. But anyway, we're going to go in and have a look at that ball here and find out what that is. Okay, so I think probably that has done that. So we will do a point sample on here. We'll stop that one because it's pretty much finished. And we will go here. Does it stop? Does it stop? <laughs> okay. Well, this is a phenomenal first set of results. So on the top of our iron-rich crenellated microsphere, we have 59.1% by weight. In atomic concentration, it's 
29 to 66. So uh, there's a very high oxygenated state of iron, which we see typically in these, what I call the magnetic core of ball lightning. And um, on these long crystals, they are calcium rich. So if you go by atomic concentration, it's oxygen and calcium. So it's almost like it's making calcium carbonate, but there's no carbon actually. So is it calcium sulfate or something? I don't know, but um, work out the ratios there. Um, and again, on this structure, it's more iron. And here is our map where we have calcium and sulfur in the background predominantly and iron and oxygen on our sphere. Obviously, oxygen goes everywhere as well. Uh, a little bit of nitrogen spread around. It's obviously working in atmosphere, so these things can happen. So that is a rather fine result. Why am I not able to? Why can I not do that? Okay. I don't know why it's not allowing me to put another sample there. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Right, so I think what we'll do is we'll do a bunch of these. Um, let's give me. I'll do one more sample on this one. I want to see whether this is a different makeup, certainly brighter. So, yes, in this case, this is even more intense iron concentration by weight, atomic concentration, hmm, not so much, but. Uh, Very, very, very clear signals. Look at that. There's no doubt what's there. Okay, so that has some nickel in it. Now you got nickels obviously beyond iron. Uh, if you look at your periodic table here, you have iron here, and you add one proton, two protons, and then you get nickel. So it's like adding a, a helium nuclei. It's an alpha conjugate on top of iron. So is the nickel from the metal elsewhere, or is it it's just added one third of a carbon atom or one quarter of an oxygen atom to the iron and synthesize some nickel? Be interesting to see as we move and look around. So absolutely stunning result on an initial look-see. Let's see what else we can find. That's just that little blob. So I think I think what we'll do is you, you can actually, uh, if we go here, we can save this position there. So we can come back to it and maybe have a little review later. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go and we're going to go here on the map and see if we can see any other little bigger balls. Let's see if we can find a bigger ball. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll have a look at this little curly bit and we'll have a look at, is that a ball? Maybe, I don't know. There's a little ball in a pit here. I'll have a quick look at that. So uh, let's go there and go revisit. That'll move the head. It's completely out of focus. So we'll do some focusing on that and we'll see what we have. Uh, we've got more of these iron fuzzy crystals. I've seen these before. These like ring-like crystals. Ah, oh, there we have it. Is that an iron-rich crenellated microsphere up there? Is that? Is that? Is it? Might be. Let's go and have a look at that. That that actually looks like a fragment.
from the cutting process of uh, this section. But this and this look like iron rich crenellated micro skiers, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> And this might this it might even look like it has the flat. So it'd be interesting if you can find one with a direct hole on it. This might have the the weak point here uh, at the bottom of the sophic triangle here. So let's see if we can get this thing into focus a little bit better. And this is this actually might be a silicon ball. If it is, that's fantastic because that's one of the elements that gets synthesized by these things as well. So let's just adjust the contrast on that. This looks very purely round, but of course you have this flatter section here. I'm kind of suspecting this might be silicon. It is bright, but that's because it sometimes charges. Okay, so let's go to... Um, EDS here, and we'll go plus, and let's go. Uh, we'll go here. We'll go boom. What have we got? Well, it's it is actually an iron-rich sphere. Um, but I'm not seeing the crenellations on here. It's it, it might be just like an initial. I need to check the size of this actually because this is really quite small. So, um, but that is iron and oxygen with a bit of carbon, which is pretty much everywhere here. 52% by weight iron. So this is sphere three. Uh, we'll go back here and we'll add a position on that. And I want to go and see if we can find a bigger one. But look, look at this. This is 300 nanometers. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 1.2 microns across. This is like the smallest kind of Evo typically that Ken Scholders would find. But of course, this is the core in my view. This is at 53,000 times magnification. Okay, that's the overall view there. We can take an image of that. I don't know whether we did. Let's take an image of that. See if it moves. Right, you see, you have to be very careful, actually. Even me just <laughs> knocking the table at this level of magnification can end up by blurring the image. What a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect circle uh, with this flat area where the sophic triangle uh, breaks through the sphere. A thing of great beauty. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so let's go back to our map. So we, this is a fragment from the cutting process. So let's see if we can find some bigger spheres here. I wish I could find the, the original one. <laughs> uh, Let's have a look at these ones up here and see if they show promise in terms of um, overall arrangement when we look at these with the better imaging. Okay, so what I'm going to do, in fact, I had the beam energy a bit high there for imaging. It's probably why we couldn't see any crenellations, although it was very small. What are we looking at here with this structure here? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> These are rather large structures, so I'm, I'm going to switch this to a lower imaging beam energy. Take a little time to adjust. Okay. So, um, what are we seeing here? Firstly, these are quite large. I mean, that's 30 microns, so these are very big impacts. If that's what they are. Okay, this is interesting because we have what looks like a, a yin and a yang structure here, potentially. Um, so I think probably uh, we want to adjust the brightness on that. And um, I think what we'll do here is we'll switch this to SED, and this will give us more idea topologically. Um, is that a magnetic core there? You see, you don't see things sometimes when you switch like this, but you do see the structure. What is that up there? What is that? That looks like contamination to me. <laughs> uh, Right. Now, ah, oh, did the ball just disappear? I think our ball just disappeared. <laughs> okay. Uh, this happens. Uh, all right. So there seemed to be a ball there. Uh, if we put it on mix, this will give us some topology and some idea of what the elements are. So... Um, uh, I don't think that was where that structure was. Maybe it's still there. It's broken. You can see, maybe you can see it's uh, hollow. Is that right? Let's see. Let's go for focus on that. Is that hollow? It's a broken sphere, is it? Not immediately clear, but I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that resolution down and I'm going to take a... Where did it go? <laughs> I just lost it. <laughs> no, there it is. This looks like a little hollow ball. Is this the magnetic core of this structure? And it's blown up. Don't know, uh, but we are going to image it. And I think probably, see, might get a better idea on SED. No, it's not doing it for me. Okay. Very small. This is 800 nanometers, so 800, 1600, uh, 2.4 microns across, let's say. Uh, it does look like it's hollow. Um, so let's image that. Is this iron oxygen? find out <laughs> okay is this a broken iron rich crenelated microsphere although you can't really see the crenelations when they're this small <laughs> um, firstly what is the the distance there um, you know that's uh, I don't know whether I want to do this stigma there okay um, We'll go another one. What is this material? Well, looky, looky, molybdenum is popping in there. Is that a real thing? It's basically iron and oxygen that, that the molybdenum does like to see if it can come in there. 4.9, is that real? I don't know. Ah, okay. For some reason, it's not getting. No, um, maybe. 
I'm not sure we, we, we need to probably up the number of samples there. So a million counts. It's, I don't think it's getting... Okay, so this is in a pit. So sometimes this occurs where it doesn't get enough beam energy. So we'll do another one where it seems to be hit a little bit more. And then it can't quite determine the elements. So here we're getting, a, are we getting more? I don't know whether we're getting more. Um, certainly isn't misconstruing anything in this time. So definitely iron. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to up the accumulation time here when you're not getting so many photons back. Anyway, I think that's pretty clear what that is. It is our iron-rich crenellated microsphere with a bit of carbon in there. And it's a broken one. What are we seeing in the background here? Probably more carbon. There we go. Are we seeing a pattern yet? <laughs> CNO, CNO, where have I heard that before? Okay, so uh, let's go here and we will come out and I will try and find, okay, we'll have a look at this bit here because um, this has got one side and the other side. So let's let's see if we've got anything interesting there. I know I was wrong with my last analysis. I'm sorry about that. I didn't change the beam energy. <laughs> so that's why I got confused with molybdenum. I'm not perfect. <laughs> so when you when you are on um, SEM, you, you need to change this to 15 kV to properly determine elements. Right, so what have we got here in this structure? Ooh, can't really see it. Oh, there we go. That's the overall structure. So it's definitely two-sided. Uh, is there a core here and a core here? Maybe. Let's adjust the brightness on that. Yeah, so it's definitely got a one side and then another side. So I would expect this to be carbon rich and this to be another element <laughs> or cleaned. Uh, okay. Right, so then um, what is this? Is this our disruption zone, maybe? I think we'll take a, this is an, a big overview image here, so we'll definitely shore up the focus there. And then we'll take an image of this, and I think I'll probably want this at ridiculous resolution, but not totally absurd resolution. <laughs> Up here, I can see an itty bitty crenellated microsphere. So, um, this is beautiful. This is really fantastic. These kind of look like silicon blobs here. It'd be interesting to see if they are that. And so, you see that object would have come in and crashed on here and the vortex structure is going around this way uh, or that way <laughs> um, and so you get the carbon I think it's coming this way it's actually it looks like it's consuming the iron here there's actually a crevice there we'll have a look at that closer uh, after we've done some SEM EDS father yeah it looks like there's some consumption here and there's de deposition down here. So we'll have a quick. Um, yeah, I need to change the beam energy. Don't make the same mistake as last time. <laughs> okay, and then we go here, and we go another one. And uh, we will go here. And firstly, I will look on this side. 
And this is probably just the iron because it's consuming it. Yeah, so we're, we're seeing the chrome here in the stainless steel. Okay, it's really chewing away at this stainless steel here. And iron, chrome, nickel, so this is the stainless steel. So it's cleaning that. And possibly the vortex on this side is consuming it to a degree. See some silicon down here? So I do expect this to be silicon over here. Okay, but very clear signal there. Iron, chromium, nickel, silicon, that is your stainless steel. Over here, I expect to be high in carbon concentration. So let's take a chunk like there. Well, I can't believe it's seeing lanthanum, but it's saying it's seeing lanthanum. I think I think this is in shadow. It's not getting enough signal. No, it's not seeing lanthanum. It's just confused because it's not got a lot of samples. I think it'll get rid of that in a minute. It'll settle down. So by oxygen, it's carbon, 47%. So the majority is, as expected, carbon. And then we have oxygen. And then we have iron, nickel, nitrogen, chromium, and so forth, sulfur and silicon. This blob down here, let's see what that is. And as expected, it's richer in silicon. Oh, hello, aluminium, aluminium, aluminium. Oh, hello, titanium. Oh, yes, titanium. There we go. There's the titanium. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Ah, that's a big one there. That is titanium. Titanium is something that we have observed coming out of exotic vacuum objects. The sphere coming out these two disks titanium rich and it is a electronuclear regeneration product of electronuclear collapse according to Takaaki Matsumoto and if you think about it isotopes of carbon and isotopes of oxygen if you fuse them in the ratio of CO2 you get titanium and there it is 6.09 percent by atomic concentration and 16.82 percent by weight that is absolutely awesome. I don't know, it's seeing, it's, there's no rubidium there, that's, that's making it up, so we'll get rid of that. <laughs> that's probably a uh, overlap, so um, I don't see a signal there for rubidium, so exclude that and it'll recalculate it. Uh, but let's see the other lines. That is a very, very clear titanium peak. That is definitely titanium, definitely aluminium. So we're going to see a pattern maybe emerging. Um, this is really, really exciting. Uh, well done, Malcolm. Um, of course, that is only one sample, but I expect that, that we'll see a pattern emerging. So there you have it. I'm going to have a closer look into this destruction zone on the Yang side. So this is the Yang side. This is where matter is torn apart. And this is the Yin, where you get uh, electronuclear regeneration. And it's a very hard line you get between these two sides. And we see this on a Mars of vibrator plates and other systems. So um, we're going to call this um, Yang Yin 1. <laughs> OK, and we'll come out and uh, we'll go and have a look first at this side. Um, and then we'll go and have a look at this. Now, is that the center of the vortex? I think this is the, where the most of the destruction is occurring, so we'll kind of go and have a look at that. So 
So 10 micron scale here, and we'll get the focus in on that. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> oh dear. How wonderful. Right. So let's take a uh, bring the. So I need to change this down to 10, and then it won't. Sometimes you get a better image. Okay. You have to readjust the contrast. Okay, look at that. That's rather beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> In the destruction zone. I'm going to zoom out because I'm going to take this at a rather high resolution here. Okay, so we're going to take this at silly res, really silly res. It's tempting to take a map of this. But that will take a lot of time, so I'm going to do that. Uh, and let's take a picture of that. And I will go to the little boys' room.
Okay, so that looked rather beautiful, didn't it? And I think we'll just go and confirm some of the raw material here <coughs> on the Yang. So we will have another one here. And this is the Yang. So this, I believe, will be the raw, raw, raw uh, steel that is being consumed. So I'll have a little blob there. I expect to see iron, chromium, and nickel. And in atomic concentration, we have coming up to 60% iron and around about 17% chromium. And nickel is around about 8%. Yeah, so... And there's some carbon. Obviously, there's carbon everywhere here. So that is as one might expect. I'll take another sample point for averaging purposes. Similar kind of story, less. So there isn't a lot of nickel in this particular point. And I will take a couple of samples on the other elemental constituent parts here. Struggling to get some. Ah, okay. I need to redo this because I didn't change the beam energy. Hmm, <laughs> happens. <laughs> so we'll stop that. That's why uh, we're having a little problems here. Uh, maybe I can uh, get rid of this one. Uh, remove image. Yes, I want to remove it. So I want to go back and I want to change the beam energy here to 15. Kill electron bolt, so I can actually do some detection here properly. <laughs> oh, and I'll go back here, and we've got another one here, and we'll do this. So on there. Same story, but with a bit more certainty so yes we're really seeing the manganese here potentially in this steel alloy so by atomic concentration the majority is iron carbon chrome nickel okay it's not actually seeing the manganese there there is no manganese it would appear. What's that line there? Maybe a little bit of a silicon in there. Fairly clear lines. We'll take another spectrum point up here. It's not seeing bore on there. <laughs> it just isn't there. So exclude that. <clears throat> the carbon's almost not there as well. I need to maybe 
change the sample time. So that when it's in shadow, because sometimes you get these things in shadow and you just can't determine what they are. Now this this is where it's cut away. We'll have a look where it's cut away. So this is kind of almost like substrate level. But there's some areas where it's cut away. The problem might be that we can't get the beam in there, but we will try. Okay, so yeah, when you cut the material away, potentially with the exotic vacuum object doing its job, um, iron, chromium, nickel, it's confusing the manganese and, and uh, chromium signal. There's a chromium signal, not manganese. In this area, it's got a relatively high deposition of carbon on the surface, possibly. Um, but by weight, it's 57.3% iron, 17.9% chromium. There's carbon at 13.9% and then nickel at 8.1%. So it's an iron, chrome, nickel, steel. Okay, so I think what we'll do now is we will go and see the other side of our yin, yang yin. <laughs> Okay, so we'll come out of this. We'll go to the other side over here. And it might be the substructure of the yang yin is here with the yin and the yang yin and the yang yin. Uh, and if that's the case, then it's actually that way around. So let's have a look. The, uh, if that's the substructure vortex, then that one to there, and maybe, yeah, this is the destruction area here. Okay. So, of, <laughs> okay, so what you're seeing here in my view is on this side, sorry, on this side, well, basically, this is the yin and this is the yang. And on here, this is the yang and this is the yin. And uh, it's difficult to tell that there, but this might be the yang and this is the yin. Okay. And the Yukon of Asara would be up here. Okay, so that means the destruction zone should be down that way. The, the overall tor structure zone, destruction zone, should be down here somewhere. Uh, is it that? Might be that little blob there. Unless there's something further up down. No, it's probably this little zone here. Although we have got an iron rich crenelated microsphere here. out of focus, but uh, I'm going to see a lot of them. But could this be the destruction zone for this? Don't know. There's another little sphere there. Isn't that lovely? Look at that. Look at that structure there. Okay. Maybe revisit that in a little while, but we'll go back to the yin and the yang of the um, of the Yin. And what I, what I mean by that is the yang is deconstructing the matter over here and it's consuming it, the overall structure, not the substructure here, but the, the overall structure is on this side is deconstructing the matter and it's coming round over like the phallicosoliton and it's coming on this side and uh, within this yin you have a yang and a yin. Okay. 
So this has got a hole in it, and this has got a little peak in it. Okay, so we will go here and just have a quick look around this area. Firstly, I will take an image of this. And the question is, <laughs> of this yin structure, and this is the yang, or, and this is the yin, is this the yang and this the yin? Because we have a little sphere there, here, so we're seeing multiple levels of tours down here. It's really rather beautiful, actually. Really rather beautiful. Okay, so we'll take an image of that. And we don't need it. Stupid, stupid high risk because it's already zoomed in a lot. 15 microns across. So uh, these structures are you know, 10 microns across. <clears throat> so I'll cancel that and I will take that down because it should give us a better image. Okay, I'll go like that. Kind of liked it before, but anyway, let's see what happens. There's that. I can see there is a crenellated microsphere here, here. In fact, I would call this a crenellated nanosphere. One here, one here, one here, and then there's one down here, slightly bigger one. This might be a fragment of a much larger one. It's got, uh, it's just a section of it. There's a hollow ball. What a beautiful thing. So I'm going to go and um, over here, and we're going to go in and look at this in more detail. So, what a rather lovely thing this is. So, sphere, sphere, sphere. That there's a lot of spheres here. So. <clears throat> in this yin area where it's constructing material, uh, we it looks like you're seeing a lot of spheres. Yeah. Very, very small little spheres. <laughs> oh, this one down here, there's another one here, and it's very clearly, <clears throat> at least what I'm looking at here, is crenellated, but it's buried right the way inside this carbon. 
or whatever. We'll find out what this structure is. I think it's carbon rich, don't I? I'll have a quick look with just SED here, give us more of the geometry there. So on SED you get a, a better look at the geometry, but you don't understand the elements. And here, when we just do BSD full, <clears throat> it'll give us a better idea of the elements. So the heavier elements here, here, and here, and here, these will be, in my view, the iron, and then the rest will be more carbon rich. Okay. But the mix is quite good because you get a little bit of geometry and a little bit of the uh, elements mixes in there. Right, so I'm going to shift this to 15 kV. When it updates it, there's definitely a crenelated microsphere in there. And that's, wow, that's like two and a half microns across. Um, 15 kV, you don't see the resolution on that. But I'm, I'm going to go back to um, 10 kV. I'm going to remember this position. And I'm going to go in here. I'm going to see if we can actually resolve this particular feature here and that is a one micron scale here so yeah it's not very big yeah it's difficult to resolve it <laughs> okay all right well we'll go back uh -huh. And that's one of the beauties of this uh, SEM. Gives you the ability to do that. We will change to 15. Really want to find a big one of these spheres. I know they'll be here now. Okay, so on 15, we're going... I think I want to put this on map because I'm going to do a map of this area. I'm going to do a map where, well, there's iron ball there, iron ball there, iron ball there. I'm ball there, I'm ball there, but I want to do like a map of kind of that area to get an overall look at the elements. So we'll just actually move to guess this position. Okay, and then go here. <clears throat> so that's the steel on the yang. And uh, this one, this steel yin. So, what do you got for us? My friend, yeah, so iron, 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 iron. Little blob there and little blob there is silicon. So if I do it like that, you'll get to see it. I don't know. And then there. Okay, so this blob here and this blob here is rich in silicon. These two blobs are rich in aluminium. aluminium. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Is that what the center of this structure? Is this similar to what we saw before? Let's turn on the iron. Yeah, so iron, iron, iron. Hmm. You seeing a pattern yet? That's interesting. Again, we see the iron, sorry, aluminium and silicon is often co-located. Oh, calcium just popped in there, just briefly, and then it went away. There you go, calcium, it's only a 
half a percent. Where is it saying that? Where is it saying the calcium? Where is the calcium? There, okay. Okay, the calcium is co-located with the silicon, and that is what we see in broken up ball lightning in the Hank Vega experiments. Calcium, and where's the silicon? Where is the silicon gone? Silicon is now back down to not being not, not No, it's not co located. Okay. Oh, is it? It's collated sulfur. Ah, the sulfur and the calcium are co located. So, this is what we see in the crystals elsewhere. So, um, Sulfur is, let's say, 32, and two sulfurs is um, more. <laughs> if you take sulfur and you fuse that with oxygen, what do you get? Sulfur is 32 plus oxygen is uh, 42 plus uh, 16, 48. Well, it could be calcium, yeah. It could be oxygen fusing with sulfur, so three oxygens becoming calcium. Is that right? 32, 42, 48. Mm -hmm. Maybe, don't know, but they are co-located. So, yeah, you can definitely see where the iron is there. It's in our balls. Iron ball, iron ball, iron ball. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, iron ball, iron ball, iron ball. Calcium. And yeah, they're totally co-located, the sulfur and the calcium. What a beautiful thing. Carbon. Iron. Oxygen everywhere. Sulfur, calcium, sulfur, calcium. Actually, this spot is co-located with something else. Is that with the aluminium? Oh, yes, aluminium. Okay. Silicon, aluminium, silicon. Okay. Very good, sir. Hello, Major. <laughs> That's for you, John. <laughs> very, very clear signals here. Definitely sulfur, definitely silicon, definitely aluminium, definitely calcium. That's the second peak of Chromium. Well, there we go. There we go. Very, very satisfying. So, the hunt now is for a big ball. Let's find a big ball. Um, let's go to this one. So, that was our yin yang with our yin and yang and so forth in the overall structure. Oh, now before we go, we're going to look to see if this is the destruction zone, this little structure down here. So uh, let's do that whilst we still are in this part of the world, our world here. Let's see what that thing is over there. Ooh, that's a rather nice, that, that is, a, is a rather nice looking ball. I think I can see that one.
crenellated microsphere about five microns across. <laughs> and this is when sometimes you put this on imaging, and sometimes when you put it on 10 kilovolts and you put it in focus, maybe we'll see it better. Maybe. Hello, hello. What are these? These are crazy things. But look at our beautiful, iron-rich, crenellated microsphere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're having fun. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful thing. So that is, I've got... I'm going to go here. This is a one micron scale down here. So one. Um, that That is just beautiful. This is the, in my view, core of ball lightning. The magnetic core of ball lightning. Get a better contrast on that. I don't know whether that's better or worse. Contrast. Anyway, <laughs> oh, it's almost too easy. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> A thing of great beauty. <laughs> uh, and these things are hollow. Uh, I like to find just some hollow ones, but. I'm interested to see what this uh, little critter is over here as well. That's a fun looking creature. The core of bull lightning. The magnetic core. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to step over uh, to see this structure because this looks interesting as well. This little structure here. What are we looking at there? <laughs> what is that there? What is it? I'm going to go to the same scale and then we can have a chance of stitching these two together. What is it? It's actually a, a tube here, here, going down here, and very tubular structure. And it looks like it's almost like a broken off one of what this is. Totally fascinating.
and I'll take an image in between so that we can stitch these together. It's not the biggest <coughs> crenellated microsphere, but it's the clearest one we have so far on this first section of the thunderstorm inside of the outside uh, sphere. It's like a little planet. <laughs> okay, so we're going to switch the beam energy here to 15. And we're going to switch the intention to point sampling because we're going to do a bunch of point samplings. Yeah. Hopefully this one doesn't fly away. And we will go to here. And what are we on? Sphere 5. And uh, we'll go here. It's a little out of focus, isn't it? This thing is very thin and transparent. <laughs> um, Okay, and I think we're going to see this is uh, iron and oxygen, but we can't assume, can we? Um, we will do a thing. This always looks like the pole here, so we've got two spots here. This might be the pole. I'm just going to do slightly off the pole. So we're on sphere five. Shear? Shear. What is it? It is iron and oxygen, mostly. Now, one might imagine that this entirely incredibly magnetic structure is tearing atoms out of the yang side and dumping them into these sphere structures um, and that might be something to do with what's going on let's have a look at this thing what is that thing <laughs> i think it's just looking straight through it and seeing what's underneath it's not molybdenum it's chromium <laughs> I wonder if we can take a 3D map of this thing. Let's see if that's possible. This is a highly structured object, and it's seeing aluminium and silicon in there, and sulfur. In my view, this is a synthesized object. Um, let's do a piece of this. Can you allow me to do that? Uh, there we go. We'll take a look at this. Right. Let's do a scan on that. See what it thinks.
<laughs> okay, first order correction. Got the height map there. That is our. Oh dear, didn't want to do that. Uh, Uh, I'll leave that one. <laughs> so, this is our height map. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's as much as it can de determine, but you can see it's a sphere, right? <laughs> I think you can work that out, it's a sphere. Um, and There we go. So this structure across its width is about um, 10 microns. Very, very spherical. Look at that. Look at those two crossing points to cross. <laughs> crossing points to cross. So that's not actually crossing in the center, is it? Okay, there we go. Yes, almost exactly a perfect sphere. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Okay, so um, let's call that one. Um, what was it? Sphere type. Save, and we will save that with everything, and change that to here and here. Yep, it's a spherical 10 to 11 micron um, structure. And soon that we will be very clear about how big the structure was that produced this as more data is gathered. Right, now where was the actual thing that I was meant to be looking at? <laughs> it's like over here. This funny little thing. Is this the destruction zone? Yeah. What what am I looking at here? What what is this? What, what is that? Little worms going on here. These little worms eating their way. Is that what's going on here? I don't know. Um, so we'll go to 10 kilovolts and we'll change this to image because that's what we want here in this case. Let's come out a little bit and it's sorted itself out. But isn't that a thing of beauty? Oh, are they little mini, mini, mini plasmoids eating through here? We might have to have a closer look. Hmm. Fascinating. It looks like there are little balls 
like on that corner there and that corner there. There's one there, one there. There's one there, one there. I think we'll have a look up here and we'll see what these little balls are if we can get in there. What a thing. So I'm going to go in a little bit tighter on this. What are we seeing? Yes, there seems to be balls in these channels. Ball there, ball there, ball there. Okay. <laughs> what, pray, are these balls? <laughs> Let's see if we go on to SED and see the geometry better. Let me improve the focus. Do I need to manually focus? Hmm. Let's see if we can get an image out of that. This does remind me of snowballs on cobblestones with the HHO or a Mars gas on a 10 yen coin that we observed in 2019 and published with a video name called Snowballs on Cobblestones. The question is, what is this material? I think this is iron rich. So what are these balls that are in these channels? I'm going to do a full BSD here. Wow, that is really clear that we have these balls in here. Now, are these other elements? I don't know. This one looks like it's burrowed through. <laughs> um, this is fascinating to me, absolutely fascinating. Let's take, you know, what kind of resolution are we looking at here? Well, let's pick it up. Yeah, very, very clear balls. I wonder if we can lower the beam energy and get an even better image. Let's try. <laughs> Very, very clear balls in these channels. A lot of little worms. Um, oh, I've got one, two, three, four in this one. One, two there, one there, one here, one at this end, and one at this end. It's like it's creating two, and then they're moving off in different directions, consuming matter. I'm going to take this down to 5 kV and see if I will get a better image. No guarantees, but <laughs> as I said, no guarantees. <laughs> it's not a better image, it's quite blurry. <laughs> what am I looking at? I need to change my glasses. Is that better? I don't know. Is it better? Not sure it's better.
I think it is best at the 10. I'm going to try and get a better image of the group in here. I'm going to go to one micron scale, which we looked at some other things at. So I know it's not looking better now, but it might do in a little while. I think I'll go over to the side and see if I can capture the two over there as well. Okay. Okay, very, very clear. I will take one image of this and then we'll just look at what we're looking at here with some elemental analysis. Very, very clear. Ball, 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 ball here, ball here, ball here, ball here. We might not be able to get the beam in there, unfortunately. Very definite radius going on around those. So we need to switch this to 15 and we need to switch this to point and go and have a look at what we can see. Just the contrast here when it's sorted itself out. Okay, so new sample area, yeah, and we will look at the overall white stuff here, which I expect is mostly iron. Hmm, carbon with iron. But yeah, by weight, it's 45% iron. What is in the balls there? Are these little things destroying the iron? Because this is the disruption zone. Are we witnessing how this disrupts things? These little things eating the iron. What are these balls? Can we get the beam in to see these balls? What is going to happen when I do that? I was getting some samples in there. Not a lot. <laughs> no, it's going okay. So how does that compare to the previous one. This one is 47% iron, 36% oxygen. Well, okay. This one is 42% iron, 33% oxygen. What is going here? The nickel in here. Oh, my, 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 my. Okay. Look at this. The area here 
is 47% iron and 2.3% nickel. But the balls that are in here, if we do another verification, is less iron and uh, less nickel. <laughs> Never get too excited. <laughs> um, so what's actually happening there? Uh, nickel is going down. 20.18. I'm mean, just going up. Oh, let's try this one. Because it sometimes the beam just can't get in there at this kind of scale. But whatever's going on here, there's some consumption of this material with a thing that is spherical in shape and bores little channels and is doing something. Isn't that a nice sphere that we found there? With whatever this thing is. <laughs> it's alive! <laughs> phosphorus. Yes, I think we got phosphorus there. Definitely is a phosphorus peak there. I maybe ran it for a longer time. So is it creating a lot of bunch of lighter elements? I, this is the destruction zone, um, in my view, if we are correct about this thing. So, anyway, I think what we'll do is we go uh, back to our map here and we will look for some other interesting features that we spotted earlier. This one I'd like to overhear a lot. Yeah, this one. This really does look like a, a yin yang structure. So, we will go here. And we will change to 10, and we will change to image. And when that's all sorted itself out, <laughs> we'll try and get it in focus. We're at the one micron scale again here. You know, are we too close? I don't know. Close to me. <laughs> uh, where is it? where are the, where's the structure? There's the, there's the structure. Okay, all right. Now, is this the? I don't know. I'll take one image of this, um, and then this will be the sulfur and stuff. Is this where it's kind of growing from? Is this one of the, the points of growth? Quite a nice little bloom, isn't it? bit of geometry going on here. <laughs> Please, <laughs> the most scientific Remove this at this point, put it down on the bottom right. No one wants to see this here.
Okay. I'm actually going to take a little nap of this and visit the boys' room again. <laughs> My highly imaginative names here. <laughs> so yes, this is a sulfur rich structure with calcium, sulfur and calcium. That is about as collated located as you can get, right? <laughs> that is the iron, sulfur calcium. Silicon up there, nickel everywhere, chromium everywhere, iron on the background, oxygen of course everywhere, carbon everywhere, but not where you have this and this. <clears throat> so one might imagine that if this is synthesized, and it's synthesized from the central point, then there is a relationship between the sulfur and the calcium. I think that's pretty clear. <laughs> Something to do with the iron or the carbon. There's a very high degree of separation between the sulfur there and the carbon and the calcium there. That is a high degree of separation. There is oxygen here, so we'll have a look at the exact makeup of that now. Pretty darn clear, I would say, that those uh, two things are co-located. <laughs> yep. Obviously the oxygen is there as well. So I'm going to take a sample on this bit, which is nicely getting hit by the beam here. Yeah. Probably enough sample for that. Go there. What do we have? Well, look at that. 
Here in this story here, we could learn something about what the synthesis that's going on. Because it is essentially itty bitty bit carbon. Itty bitty bit of nitrogen, but a whole shed load, a whole shed load, look at that, of sulfur and calcium. So, sulfur plus oxygen, does that make calcium? Let's have a look at our reaction tables at nanosoft.co.nz and see what we can see. I'll take another sample point for the sake of verification. Um, so we will take the sample point here. See if you see the same story. Well, it's not dissimilar. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Pretty much the same story. So, fusion reactions, and we will start with... Uh, oxygen in E1 and we will do sulfur in E2 and we will go execute query. What do we get? Interestingly, <laughs> it isn't that. It is chromium and vanadium, so it must be then carbon and sulfur. If you fuse carbon and sulfur, no, you get titanium. So something is not. It's a little bit over, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, if we have E2 in sulfur, and unless it's an exchange reaction, we'll, we'll, we'll work out um, E in car if you have sulfur it requires boron or lithium to get you to your calcium isotope so I think there's an exchange reaction it's basically a lot of nucleons are occurring at the same time uh, to do the transmutation so I'm going to do a two to two reactions and we basically have oxygen sulfur and calcium and so we have oxygen and sulfur, which is double oxygen. And uh, let's see what we get. Da di da di da da di 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 da What is the story here? You have oxygen 18 and sulfur 32. You end up with lithium 6 and calcium 44. But what if it's just sulfur and sulfur, but they're all made from oxygen, like oxygen 17? What do we get as an exchange reaction? Do we end up with a bit of carbon left over? No, we're not seeing anything there. Okay, so the jury's out on that, but these structures, Undeniably, I've got oxygen, sulfur, and calcium going on in them.
Mm -hmm. Okay, interestingly, if you have carbon and sulfur, you end up by producing helium and calcium isotopes, typically. Um, so the oxygen could be fusing to uh, what, are we, what are we looking? The oxygen, two oxygens, fuses to sulfur, and then carbon. Carbon comes in, so you've got CO2. So the CO2 comes in, and that whole lot come together. So sulfur is two oxygens, and uh, then you bring in carbon. And so, for instance, the reaction carbon-12 with two oxygens fusing to sulfur-32 leaves you with calcium-40, the most abundant calcium, and helium-4. The helium-4 may come out of the reaction, um, but... Uh, It might, because there's a lot of nucleons going on at the same time, it might fuse uh, three, three together into another reaction. But you're seeing a little bit of carbon coming out, so that might be the residual. So I would think what's going on here is you're getting CO2 going in, potentially, and it's producing sulfur and calcium from sulfur synthesis from the O2, and carbon um, combining with the sulfur to produce calcium isotopes and helium. But because that's an alpha particle, it'll probably, because there's billions of atoms going on at the same time. So that's a hypothesis for what is causing these structures um, to have this chemical makeup. And if we look at this, uh, they're, they're pretty equivalent, all bar a little bit of variation. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little area scan here. Um, can I do an area scan here? Region. Region. No, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. So I'll stop that. Um... No, no, no. Hmm, that's not what I want. Anyway, um, I think I'll take a little map of this. Will I take a map of this? Yeah, let's take a map of this. It's a different one. Um, close. Scan. And I'm going to go to the little boys' room.
These crystals are a fairly regular width, um, so how wide are they? Nine point four microns. much of a muchness in size of these things, aren't they? Hmm. On the centre point out to there. <clears throat> 25 microns. Okay, we will call this one flower. We will save it. Okay. Well, I enjoyed doing that. Uh, we will go and have a look at the thing we came to see, which is up here. Um, I think we can safely conclude that most of these flower structures are these type of uh, chemical arrangements. Um, not so sure I'm that interested in taking that. I want to find a really big sphere, actually, at the moment. So let's go and see what we can find in that respect. Just, I'm going to move around a bit here. I'll find one by chance. <laughs> Hmm. A lot of these worm patterns here. Look at this. A lot of them. A very, very large number of these wormy-like patterns. Let's knock that back a bit and put that to image. Now, the interesting thing is, is this the magnetic core that's running around and it's depositing the thing on the outside? Is it burrowing a hole or is it depositing? That's, I can't see anything like that. <laughs> wow, it's literally everywhere here. This is really rather cool. Look at that. It might be that this whole yellow stuff is actually caused by very small plasmoids. The core is moving around and it is the rest of it is deposited on the outside of the structure, if you know what I mean. So um, Stunning, 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 stunning. Very, very clear. Very, very, very clear what is going on here. Look at this. Look at this. <gasps> Look at it. So the iron is 
effectively being deposited on the outside of the structure, the core. Mm. This whole area is replete with these structures. Look at it. Remarkable. Look, one there, one there, one there. One there, one there, one there. <laughs> they either have two in them or they're, they're fairly equidistant in spacing. It's alive! <laughs> So what are we looking at here on the oval image? We are here on one of these yellow areas. Look at this. That's where we are, on this yellow area. Interesting. And it's everywhere. <laughs> wow, there's all kinds of statistics maybe you could get off this ultimately. Needs more study. Right, we're going to go down to one micron, and we'll take a lovely picture of this. Yeah. I'll leave this at two micron. What scale have we got is that? We'll take a silly resolution on this. Uh -huh. Don't take a silly resolution. No, it's already quite close in. Okay. Um... Fascinating. Lots of equidistant one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, probably one there, one there, one there, one there. This reminds me of the Evo chopping through the silicon dioxide in Neil Crichton Gold's uh, line reactors and leaving behind it a little crystal or something. It's a little community of plasma organisms. Let's go on this image here. And going to a very yellow area. Is it more of the same? No, it's different. There's definitely different kind of zones. So the slightly darker areas seem to be these kind of wormy bits. Okay, I'm not really seeing it there.
Okay, we are on one sample. And it's two o'clock. I think I'm going to look at a part of the um, <clears throat> outside of the inside sphere. And hopefully I'll have time to look at another section of the inside of the outside sphere. I might have a quick look at these structure. One of these is an indicative one. <clears throat> and I will find my big crenellated microsphere, but you know, we have enough already. <laughs> it's already good. Robbery. So we're going to look at this one and we'll see what it's comprised of. Mm -hmm. So do our one micron resolution. Messy blob. And I'll take a quick image of this.
Okay, and we switch this to uh, 15 and 4 pointing. Point samples, that is. It'll go blurry, I expect. <laughs> Just a bit. I may just upload this unedited. Sorry for the delays. Uh, you can always skip through and get to the money shots. Okay, there we go. So let's see what we have here. Plus, what is this? We'll have a spot over here in the background. We'll have a spot on the outside of the structure. And have a spot at the top of this, and then this little bit which looks like a fragment or something. So, our first structure is look, the iron, chromium, silicon, yeah, something along the lines of the steel. Where is this actually? Double carbon, which is magnesium. We have magnesium. Do we really have magnesium? It seems to think we do. Fuse two carbons together and you get magnesium. Now, should there be magnesium in this reactor? I don't think so. <laughs> Zinc. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I definitely got the beam energy high enough. Yes, I've got it. Cool. No, I don't think rubidium is a thing. But zinc is definitely a thing. Look. There we go. We got zinc. Interesting. Uh, rubidium is not a thing. Exclude. What's that peak there? There's a sulfur peak there. What are we seeing in this one? In the center of this structure, we have aluminium and silicon. Chrome peak and so on. So, hmm. Again, on this bit, a high level of magnesium or some magnesium calcium. These are definitely ball lightning type things. I don't think that's Presidimium. Oh, hold on, it might be. <laughs> oh, no, it's probably another peak of something else. It's Chromium peak. It's not Chromium. It's not Presidimium. Exclude. Now, what are you thinking it is? It must be Chromium. Uh, let's do include. All right, there we go. What's that? Sulfur, sulfur, more like the sulfur. What's this over here? Okay, don't think that's true. Um, why? Magnesium, calcium. Magnesium is very interesting. That is double carbon. Magnesium there. 
All right, well, well, we'll do an area sample on this because um, I think it's quite interesting. I'll give us more sample sample so we get a better accuracy on our element determination. Definitely magnesium there. There's definitely magnesium in here. Where is the magnesium in the overall structure? Magnesium is in this blob. This is a magnesium ish rich ish blob, blob. And so is silicon. Aluminium is that is that fragment to the side. Yeah, silicon. So <clears throat> silicon is oxygen fused with carbon. Okay. Uh, magnesium is carbon fused with carbon. So this is quite interesting. And that central bit is iron rich. That is the silicon in the blob. That is the magnesium in the blob. Fascinating. It's not molybdenum, it's chromium. Maybe it is molybdenum in this case. Interesting. Or sulfur? It might be sulfur. What's this meant to be down here? Anyway, I think the magnesium peak is uh, pretty darn clear there. So is the aluminium. It's not thallium. Thulium. <laughs> thallium. No, it's definitely not thallium. Not molybdenum. What is that then? What are we seeing there? That must be sulfur. It's got to be sulfur. Uh, not molybdenum. Exclude. Include sulfur. Much better. Much better. <laughs> what is that? Possibly zinc. Yeah, I think it's probably zinc. What is that? Lead, that would be interesting. Where's the lead then? Is it in the center of the center? Doesn't want to commit to it. No, I think it's a secondary peak, yeah. Um, what is this? That's calcium. Not a lot of calcium, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Argon? No, manganese.
Well, it definitely has carbon in that blob. And we know that two carbon, carbon and oxygen, well, first, it has op not a lot of oxygen, but it does have oxygen and it has carbon. You fuse carbon and oxygen and you get silicon. Definitely there. You fuse two carbons and you get magnesium. Definitely there. Uh, no aluminium in that particular blob. Um, 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 um. There is calcium right in the center of the blob. Very nice. Right in the center we have calcium bit. Okay. The sulfur is actually on the outside. The manganese, whatever if that is, is actually around it. That's these kind of blobs. Interesting, because that is almost like chromium plus uh, a deuteron type thing. Or a proton. Um, very clear on the silicon. Don't think we can argue this. <laughs> yeah, definitely there. It's got this peak here. What is that peak? It might be the zinc. It's not francisium and it's not lanthanum, so it must be zinc. Mm -hmm. It's not a much of zinc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's that. Very low percentage. If it is. I don't think there's any nitrogen there. But it thinks there is. I don't see the peak for nitrogen. I'm not convinced about that. The zinc's not very strong. Okay. Uh, well, the clear things is the magnesium and the silicon, and they are co located. Silicon and magnesium, like I said, um, we have oxygen. And carbon. Oxygen and carbon are in this blob. And two carbons make magnesium and carbon and oxygen makes silicon. And there we have it. Rather interesting and calcium is actually just in the center bit of the particular structure here um, where my, one might expect it. So very interesting. Um, uh, Call this. Don't know. Um, of course, is this contamination? I don't know. It's on the surface, but it does have these other elements blended in. Uh, so uh, one has to be aware of that. Okay, so uh, can we find what I want to find? There's a very big ball. Can we find a very big ball? Don't know. What's this one? That looks like a nice one. Let's go there. Oh, it's quite big. <laughs> it really is a ball. <laughs> We're just very close. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful thing. Oh, look at this puppy. Is that the one that we launched off in a different direction? Oh, look at that. Look at him. Beautiful thing. So that is there. And we will take a shot of this. Why not? Is it going to give us a better image if we go that and this? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Answer? No. <laughs> Maybe not. Let's see when we've got it in focus. Sometimes with highly conductive things, you need it to be uh, a little bit more electrons on the uh, target. Kind of liked it as it was before, really. Kind of like the extra definition on the crystal boundaries. Go on, give it to me. Slightly ovoid in shape, this one. Ah, what happened? We had such a lovely image before. <laughs> I'm just trying to focus on the background. Let me give a... Take a shot of that. We already know it's iron and oxygen. <laughs> we'll do one confirmatory SEM, EDS rather. This one hasn't quite made it into a beautiful ball. Okay, I will go here, and I will go, what, oh, what is this? Well, it would appear to be iron and oxygen. <laughs> well, well, well. Interestingly, this actually has picked up some chromium. Um, so, is this fluidizing some of the steel in this case? And this is why this, because it's got actually the chromium in it, it's not so perfect. Let's see if we can find another one. Not that one. Something that size would be good. It's that one. Uh, not quite what I was expecting. That looks like a fragment of the steel from the cutting process. This is detritus, <laughs> in my view. Over here, though, is uh, one of our little florets. Uh, these are plentiful, it would seem. 
There's little ions there, there. Okay, um, so we go back to our map. Mm -hmm. mm, not so interesting. Looking through to the substrate. Hmm. The lion's crenellated sphere here. Look at that. Bitty, bitty, bitty. Interesting. What's this one? This isn't an iron sphere. This is silicon sphere. Hmm. Oh, hello. This actually has a trail coming out of it. Let's have a look at this. Um, Put that down to that. <clears throat> yeah, we got a plume coming out of this one. What is this? Is, it, is this a carbon sphere? Or hold on, is this a sphere with it cut off here? Maybe it spun round as it died. Um, oh, it's looks like it's charging and it's just attracted something to it which is unfortunate uh, which probably means it is silicon it does have a hard cutoff there all right it's obviously attracted a bunch of stuff so there's the sphere with your cut off uh, i would think that this is going to get messy oh dear what happened there i think it jumped <laughs> Where, where have you gone? Oh, you're there. There's another one here, actually. A smaller one. Um, okay. No, that's just messy. But it might be useful. <laughs> Are there going to be more jumping? It's things are jumping onto it, so it's charging and it's pulling other things onto it. Um, but the actual thing looks like it's embedded in this structure up here, up here. So it's like an offshoot of it. Okay, so uh, can we get this any better in focus? Yes, we can. There, somewhere. Mm. Is that glassy carbon? Is it silicon? Glassy carbon would charge.
interestingly, the bits that have jumped onto it might be preventing it from overcharging now, which is good. So hopefully we'll be able to see what it is. Kind of suspect it's either silicon or glassy carbon. I like the fact that it is a very nice sphere and then it has this cut off here. So we will have a look. We need to switch this to 15 and to the point. And it's going to go out of focus again. <laughs> And probably move. No, nope, not that much move. Definitely out of focus, though. Okay. Charging more. I think it might be silicon dioxide now. So, boink. Okay, what is this material? Yeah. Looks like it might be glassy kyber, carbon. Atomic concentration, mostly carbon. Take another sample on that. Maybe there. You see how this smoothly blends into this composite which we understand now to be sort of sulfur and calcium so this might be the remaining carbon payload after it's dumped you see now that's going into calcium so i'm going to do a line scan from there to there and you can't, might see the progression of elements let me just check the resolution of the line scan. Which is the line scan. Uh, give me a few more points on that. No, that's too many, too much time. Um, yeah, that might be okay. Get the idea. So I'm going to do this line scan from this material onto this material across the boundary. Where should I do it? I do it from here. No, I think that's all well illuminated there, so we'll do it like that. Well, how about that? As that evenly blends in there. So basically, in my view, the, the plasmoid has come. Let's just check I'm showing the camera. Yeah, I am. The plasmoid has come down here. The, ball lightning has come down here and it's kind of run out of its payload and this is the end of the line and it's just dumping the rest of its carbon and uh, so if you show this down here you've got your oxygen and your sulfur and your calcium oh this is just beautiful absolutely beautiful look coming from here you have carbon and oxygen going up and down and the sulfur and calcium. And as you come across this boundary, it runs out of the ability, in my view, to synthesize the sulfur and the calcium. And it drops down to uh, uh, basically dumping the rest of the carbon that was in the structure captured. This is telling an incredibly important story, in my view. Um, the exotic vacuum object, the ball lightning, is carrying a huge payload and inside this structure it is able to transmute the two oxygens and the carbon uh, from the CO2 into sulfur and into calcium. Sulfur being um, two oxygens and calcium being two oxygens fused with 
carbon, but leaving an alpha particle over, left over. And I don't know why it's even bothering with nitrogen. It's zero, so we'll get rid of that. <laughs> is it zero everywhere? Yeah, why is it even bothering with nitrogen? Um, exclude. Yeah. This is telling the story we saw earlier, or the hypothesis that we worked out by looking at these crystal structures. And this is telling the story of the end of uh, a ball lightning's payload. Okay? And right, the, e even when it's kind of dying out, it's still got a bit of oxygen going on. And what is oxygen? It's an alpha onto the carbon. <laughs> <laughs> so the balance of alpha particles, I, you know, this is my hypothesis, the balance of the alpha particles is being added to the carbon to produce oxygen. Okay, so it's synthesizing oxygen from the carbon um, and the two oxygens are fusing to make sulfur and carbon and sulfur are fusing to make calcium, but in an exchange reaction that leaves some alpha left over in the cluster, and the alpha is fusing with the carbon to produce oxygen here. This might be the story of the day. <laughs> it's confirming hypothesis from Parkmov's reaction calculations. Based on looking at these uh, crystal structures earlier in the day, and uh, here we have the, the end of the death of one of these structures. This is the end of the line. Yeah? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Telling the story. Telling the story. So at peak points, it's 11% carbon. So this, this might actually be telling you what it can maximally do. So right up here... At this point, you have 20.45% 20 calcium weight by weight. Okay? And then as we come down here, and it's kind of losing its power payload, it can't quite keep that up, and it drops down. Well, actually, it's, it's still relatively sim similar. It's not moving a lot. Um, the carbon's going up, and then it's coming down, it's going up and down, and then so on and at this point it goes past the threshold and it just dies and all it can do is maintain a little bit synthesis of oxygen or maybe it's got oxygen in the payload um, but I would imagine that since we know that it should be having alpha particle left over and we know that in other experiments in ball lightning for instance the titanium and um, polytetrafluoroethylene experiment where we saw alpha conjugate nuclei onto titanium and onto fluorine. Uh, the alpha gets left over. That is the balance from the fusion of carbon or the exchange reaction between carbon and uh, sulfur producing the calcium. And this gets put into the carbon as it kind of dies out over here. And probably if we didn't have all this rubbish on the top here, you'd probably find it was essentially, eventually, mostly carbon. But um, there we go. That, in my view, really is strong evidence uh, that exotic vacuum objects are in here. Ball lightning is in here, and it's doing what ball lightning does. And uh, there we go. You've got calcium and sulfur there. Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I really will find another big ball. Uh, let's go and have a quick look on where this is. Oh, it's still doing analysis. Okay, I'll probably need, I don't really need, it's not changing this much. So I think we can, we can maybe stop that and let it settle down. Okay. Really good. So this is where on this sample. It's over here on our sample. Okay. Well, there's a little white spot there, a little white spot there. Maybe those, and there's a nice one up there. So maybe we can actually use those to 
to comment something. But anyway, this is at the end of one of these structures. Here's another one here. Uh, sorry. See, a kind of like ball thing, and it's cut off on one side. I'm kind of suspecting, I've seen this before, I suspect that these spheres right here might turn out to be calcium rich. Um, I've seen this in the work of the, the, my analysis of the core of the 225-day reactor of Alexander Parkhamov. So I'm going to have a look here, and we'll just see if we can image this a bit better. Um, let's go down a bit. I'm going to change the dynamics here. Where did it go? And you're up there. Actually, it looks like it's got the hole here. So it might have spat this out and then just died there. So we'll take an image of that. It's charging quite a bit, but then that's what happens in these scenarios. Possibly glassy carbon. I think this is going to be little calcium balls, uh, and I believe that this might be something that it spat out. Let's see what we can see. Right, first on, is this glassy carbon? Oh, did I change the... Uh... No, I didn't. Oops, 
sorry, and we will go stop, and we will go remove that one. Yes, I want to remove it. Okay, so we will go 15 and point. Hopefully this is stuck on here, <laughs> fused to the calcium, and uh, we will be able to do it without it charging. Uh, I can't see anything. Okay, let's do an autofocus here first. Where are you? Where have you gone? No. Did I lose it? No, there he is. Not so great focus on that. Uh, we'll go here because I want that bit. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna move if I do that. Okay. Okay, so glassy carbon and calcium. These are my predictions based on what I saw in Alexander Parkamov's uh, 225 day Lenar reactor. So we will get rid of this one. Remove image. Yes. And we'll go plus. And we will go. Is this glassy carbon? Atomic concentration is around about 60% carbon and oxygen. Okay, itty bitty bit of calcium down the end there. So I think these are the kind of structures possibly that are doing this work. Sulfur. So sulfur and calcium, these are things you expect to see in ball lightning as is iron. Of course, iron, you might argue, is coming from the system, but um, we know that ball lightning does iron as well. So yeah, this is very much, in my view, the signature of a structure that is doing ball lightning type work. Sulfur, calcium, iron. Um, and also the carbon in there. Right, so what, pray tell, are these spheres? Well, they're richer in calcium. By weight concentration, they are 5%, whereas the previous one was 2%. Uh, is that richer in sulfur as well? Sulfur is 1.8 and calcium is 2. In this case, the sulfur is four and the calcium is five. And in this case, the iron was 3.2. And in this case, the iron is 60%. These are little iron spheres with calcium and sulfur. And it's telling the same story in my view. We'll do a verification with another one. But again, sulfur, calcium, iron, okay. Chromium would potentially imply that this is also capturing some material. 
from the scale. Iron, sulfur, calcium, oxygen, carbon, these, this is the story of ball lightning, right here. In my personal view, I may be wrong, but in my personal view, that's what we are seeing here. Okay. Can we give this the run around and find very nice sphere, right? There's one very nice little white blob there. What I was seeing if I pull right out. No, it's that fragment, I guess. What's that? Is that another fragment? Yeah, these like cutting fragments, I think. Uh, what is that one? What a joy to be working with this sample. That's where we went before. What is that over there? That, that looks like it might be a sphere. What have we got there? No, it's a fragment. Like a fragment, but I don't think it will be. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like a fragment. Not so interesting. This looks like a big ball lining is hit there and you're seeing substructures within that.
It just takes time. And patience. Lots and lots and lots of patience. There's a little crenellated sphere. Not the best one. Not the best one. Full of mess. Mess. Maybe on the inner sphere, which I will look at next, we will find better examples. Don't know. This is one of these flecks. Yeah. That look like they're broken off. Ah, no. This, what we, what you're seeing here is going through to the substrate. So this is the stainless steel. It kind of explains that. What they are. Lots of mess on this. Oh, a little ball there. Cool. Okay. Let's have a look at some of these little spots down here, which are outside of our originally scanned area. Maybe I can get two samples done today. Uh. Are all of these calcium rich? Structurally fine.
Uh, is there any one way to find out? 15. Point. What is that? What are they? Well, look at that. Calcium, sulfur, oxygen. Same, same story. I think we know how they're made. So this is what possibly is going on in this device. Oxygen or isotopes thereof are being produced. Maybe oxygen 17 or oxygen 18 from oxygen by fusing hydrogen and oxygen in the water. These oxygen isotopes are fusing to make isotopes of sulfur and carbon is fusing with sulfur to make calcium plus helium and helium then gets part of the overall story later on. So lots of oxygen, lots of sulfur there. Look at that, it's just great. Look at that. Take another sample. Let's say on a different crystal. Let's say that crystal. Is it the same story? I think it might be. Very, very clear, isn't it? <laughs> very, very clear. What you see out of ball lightning is oxygen lines, nitrogen lines, sulfur lines, calcium lines, and silicon lines. I mean, like, it's literally the flower of life, isn't it? <laughs> calcium, that's in your bones. You're mostly made of carbon and oxygen. And you need sulfur, mm, definitely, and nitrogen, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think our little spot here is going to be iron. <laughs> Just did a guess. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> Atomic concentration at 25%, 26 nearly, of iron. No, it's dropping down a bit, but anyway, iron and oxygen, there we go. You're seeing a pattern. Are you seeing a pattern? Yeah, it's what it is. It's what it is. 
pilots everywhere. <laughs> fragment from cutting and like if you go in here you can see a whole bunch of these things like so we've got our spheres here regularly arranged one here one here one here one here one here these are the magnetic cores of the ball lightning in my view and this agglomeration of materials here's another one very similar to the ones in the Vega Valley. Change the contrast on that. It's just everywhere. What a beautiful thing this sample is. Thank you for having the courage, Malcolm Bendel, to let me have a look at it and for taking apart your sacred cow, <laughs> being your, um, ah, oh, this, this is lovely. You can see it's just amazing. This is spheres everywhere and the structures here. Really, this tells a story. Um, this might be the last look at this sample today. I'm going to try and get the outside of the inside in there. with a high beam energy. Just see, look, sphere, 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 all over, sphere. Yeah, lots of little ones, sphere, sphere, sphere. Hmm. Yeah, sphere at the end of this one, sphere at the end of this one, sphere at this end. Sphere at the end of here, sphere at the ends of these fronds. So you can imagine there's a big ball lightning hits here and it just splays out with these crystals. But sphere, sphere, sphere. Oh, this is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to grab that lovely little florette and we're going to do it in stupid reds. We'll just go in there and See if we can get a better close up uh, focus on that. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. We like that a lot. So a little sphere here. So it's like a big ball of lightning crashes on there, and then as it splays out, it lays down these tendrils 
of this internally synthesized material. That's my theory, and uh, it's my working theory right now. I'm gonna, this whole structure here looks like one kind of impact, so I'll try and get that in frame. And then I'll take a silly resolution of it. Okay. Uh huh. A little, little bit over that way. Too much, too much. Okay, got the whole of that structure in there. So yeah, you can just see balls, 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 lots of balls. <laughs> uh, and we will take a silly resolution of that. And I'll try and go and get some food because I'm really hungry. It's 3.16. Get the other one mapping out when I do that. Yeah, the balls are everywhere. Look, ball at the end of this run. We have ball at the end of that, 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 ball at the end of that. Ball there, ball there. Yeah, so it, it looks like a big ball lightnings come in and just like you see on the work of Leonid Oritzkev when he creates a ball lightning and a little bit later it forms lots of little ball lightnings well that's kind of like hit here and as it goes out it's dumping its payload in these rich crystals these crystals by the way look exactly like the crystals on the flux loop on the lion uh, reactor the one that first gave me this um, magnetohydrodynamic structure and if you recall there was the uh, Cantal wire and right in the center there was a vortex and it had these kind of crystals on there this is how it works I'm pretty certain of that I mean look at this it's ball there ball there ball there ball there we just confirm some of these are iron rich but I expect they are um, ball there, ball there, yeah. Ah, what a thing of great beauty. Mate, how you doing? I'm good. And Malcolm, I wanted to give you the good news. Okay, you're pregnant. Congratulations. <laughs> no, you're gonna be you're gonna be having babies after you hear this. With with wait, 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 wait. let me sit up and take it. And I, I, I can't take it lying down because I'm still sleeping, so <laughs> <laughs> Well you're actually live on the recording with me actually doing the, the sampling here. So 
I've only actually had one sample in, but I wanted to get it on this recording, the, the me telling you. Um, but essentially, within a few seconds, I found the iron-rich crenellated spheres, which are the magnetic core of ball lightning. Uh, that was one of the hardest things we, that uh, Sian and I, when we were shopping for nine hours, you know, we went to so many shops before we found one that had iron-rich crenellated spheres. Oh, yes, spheres. the iron-rich crenellated spheres. Well, actually, this tells a beautiful story. We for... a pizza shop to have an <laughs> <laughs> um, They come with chips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, Malcolm, um, what you're seeing on here are the exact same crystals that were on the Lion 1 or 2 reactor, I think, in the center of the flux loop in the magnetohydrodynamic structure, which has calcium, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen in. They look identical, right? But in your case, it's clear to me that large ball lightning have collided with the inside of the outside. It's broken up into small fragments, and they have deposited these large crystals. They look like this. And the ball lightning, the, the iron-rich crenellated spheres, are at the end of each channel. And so what's happening is, uh, and so as far as I can work it out, as far as I can work it out, it's synthesizing isotopes of oxygen, which we've already identified. Those are fusing to sulfur. And the carbon is then combining in an exchange reaction to produce calcium and leaving an alpha particle left, left over and you end up sometimes with an iron blob at the end, which is the core of the magnetic core of ball lining, or you end up with a carbon, uh, glassy carbon sphere, which has uh, um, uh, some level of residual oxygen, and that's because the remaining alpha particles that are in the cluster are fusing with the carbon to, uh, um, to make oxygen. And that's, that's caused by the collapse. Yeah, it's a collapse, but I literally have a line, and you can draw the line from this calcium sulfur um, crystal. Cri uh, crystal, and it blends smoothly into this spherical uh, glassy carbon sphere, which has some oxygen in it. And, and like it's I say, a no, it's a glassy carbon. Glassy carbon is a real thing. It's a solid form of carbon. But what what you are looking at here? Sorry, what? Amorphous yes, exactly. And I've seen this a lot of times before. But what you're seeing here is it's just it's just frankly astounding. It, it, it is astounding. Um, it's yeah. way, way better. And I, like I've got I've only had time to put one sample in. I told you it takes time. <laughs> but I had to learn and I've recorded the whole session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the outside of the inside in and we'll see what's there. Um, and by the way, the yellow stuff is sulfur. <laughs> oh, well, you've, you've worn your sulfur t-shirt. So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's beyond, uh, it's beyond. But, uh, which sample did you put in? I'm interested. Uh, I put in sample, oh, sample two. No, I didn't. No, sample, hold on. Sample four. Sample, sample four. The one that has a little bit of the sulfur waves, um, oh, right, yeah, but and the, the and below way. that, it, Malcolm, short of a miracle, short of a miracle being wrong, there is every signature that I've witnessed in systems. But I found the South Pole too. Remember the sulfur North Pole? There's the South Pole as well. It, it, we have you know what? It, 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 it's it that 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 might just be more of the same because this is doing what ball lightning does. No, no, but I mean, not sulfur, it's the other side. So this is your North Pole sulfur positive. There's a negative something or other, and it's special. Right. And I'm going to take a sample of it. There is a deposit similar to the North Pole and the South Pole, and it's with the same structure, right. except it's black. Yeah. The same sort of thing we got is the outside and the inside. Right. I think it's probably the amorphous uh, carbon on Carbon. Well, praise God for that, eh? Yeah, I, but it was so hilarious. You'll see my excitement. Uh, I couldn't temper my excitement because, like, I've seen the iron-rich crenellated sphere. Now, you've got iron in there. That's a, that's an issue, right? 
But I don't think you have so much sulfur and calcium in your system. So what you have to do is now run long-term tests without any sulfur in the fuel or any sulfur in any... Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to correct you on that. This is the clean gas. Okay, fine. So Not that... Clean yeah. Gas. Okay. There's no sulfur in it. Yeah. Now, the, the other thing is you have to use deionized water. I'm just dealing with the criticisms that this will bring. You, know, you need to make sure that there's no chance of any calcium coming through from tap water, right? But from my point of view, what I'm looking at here is there was no calcium. It, well, I'm, I'm doing, I'm showing you the crystals here, but like sphere, 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 and these are iron-rich crenellated spheres. And then at the end, sometimes you... So it's, it's doing an image here, so there's a big sphere here. This will be the stuff that flashes back as white crystals. And they're different scales, so you know, you're, you're going to get reflection off these faces. But it's, it, I, I'm telling you, it is exactly the same crystals in the center of the lion vortex. So I know what I'm looking at. It's made of the same stuff, and oh, I know... We, me, me too. We used to run, like, before I went back to normal water, we ran, it was off distilled water originally for the test. Uh, these, 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 are, these are arguments we need to address down the line. What I'm telling you, there was no... Okay. So it could be just filled up on tap water, but I didn't see much difference in the performance. But initially, uh, we used to fill up the bubbler uh, initially from the test work initially uh, uh, with distilled water. Right. Yeah. yeah. That was the initial test, but that was that was uh, um, yeah when we first built it. That's what it. I uh, yeah. There may have been after. I'll have to ask the boys whether what what they did after that. But anyway, that's it. The bottom line is we all okay. Well, deionized water is probably a better product anyway. But I didn't go, want to go that way. No, I, I mean what you're going to have to do is do this to deal with criticisms. But from my point of view, in no, the in the no, lion no, reactor, there was no calcium, and it produced identical crystals in the centre of the vortex. Right? Yeah. I've seen well, these things well, before. What, what I did find titanium, yes. <laughs> Good. Well, that was... No, 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 no Malcolm. That was the next door. <laughs> Malcolm, I, I think pending someone trying to pretend that there's a different reality, um, uh, this this is involving ball lightning phenomena. Okay, man. Okay, well done. So, so um, okay, well, that's exciting news. Uh, th th it's ex I've, I've looked at one sample... And I could probably spend another two months on this one sample. Um, well, we've also booked your hotel room in India. Because there's, <laughs> there's something you might have to say. There. Well, I, I, I have to agree with the bosses that, that, that I can go. And, of course, I am going as a complete independent. Well, and you know that, right? So, yes, absolutely. And, uh, but so, uh, it's, anyway, I think it's quite an auspicious occasion because that's, that's what we... A good old Cyan, eh? Uh, yeah, I mean to, to 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 do it and come over, but for me this is 
It's 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 literally awesome, and like it couldn't have happened in a better sequence because the realization of these oh, crystals. Oh, you see, mate, you've still got your your own samples as well to back it up. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter because I know these crystals from the lion reactor, and I know the iron rich crenellated spheres from everything else that I've witnessed. So, like these are the signatures of the ball lightning. Uh, toroidal fractal process the it's, it's everything and and so like it, it doesn't it, from me it's just extra extra data to to ram home the point um in my view um but like i can actually what see the mechanism that's occurring um with what i've already studied today and so and can I describe those structures like when you zoom out on them can you see where you look, are, those crystals? Yeah, so like, so like, so for instance, you can see here, look, that there, you can see the yellow line. So I'm looking at the black area here. Right. Right, you can see where I've got that. That's where that clear film is, right? In that granulated clear film area. Okay, so that's there. And so where I'm looking there, you can see here, I've got this ball here and the crystals on. Yeah. And wait, 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 I just screwed that up. Yeah, can I just say that ball? Can you? Yeah, okay. So that's your crinulated sphere. Yeah. That one might not be. I'm just about, you can see me analyze this live. So I will go here. Uh, here's a crinulated sphere, look. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the I'll send you the images. I, I need to. I'm, I'm running out of time, and I want to get the other sample in and start mapping it so that I can work with it. Um, right. So I'm going to do a sample on that circle. And we. Oh, hold on. Let me just see if I've got the right beam. Right, in. Just, you can just do a quick one, and I'll just take the. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. You can see the live analysis coming up here, and you know what? That iron-rich crenellated sphere that we're looking at. It is, by mass, 60% iron. Yeah, but look, at it's got nitrogen and carbon in it as well. Yeah, well, it does. That, that's what, what, what you've got, mostly carbon and oxygen in there. So it's carbon, oxygen, and iron. Can you go back to that again? <laughs> Mate, you're, you're going to have so much data, it's going to, it's going to be ridiculous. Look at the picture of the sphere. That, that was oh, well, uh, okay, so th this one here, yeah, the sphere here, there. Uh, oh, right, yeah, but that's a different sphere. This is a different sphere. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're essentially saying this is a much smaller one here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right, got it. Okay, thanks so much. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I, I can see exactly what's going on. It's consistent with the spectrum of ball lightning uh, published in, in Wikipedia because uh, you see typically I... Oh, Oh, I haven't got that sample in. It's over there. I haven't had time to look at that. <laughs> okay, well, that's all I was interested. I want it, to listen, I want, I want to look. I, I'm going to get this sample and a, and a much less time on the inner sample. Um, but the, 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 the story is this is but doing the job. On the inside of the inner sphere, too, uh, on the other side of the outside of the inner sphere, there's one square. I know. That's actually, from the inner side of the inner Yeah, I know. I've got it here. This, this, is, this is number one, sample one. And so I'm going to put that in, and that's all I'm going to get to do today, I think. Oh, how many hours have you got there? Uh, well, they, they had a problem with the SEM to start with. They had to do some cleaning, so I didn't get to go start until 11. But I've been going since 11 till right now on this one sample. But it, it, Malcolm, it, does, it, it from my point of view, it doesn't matter. It, the story is this is doing ball lightning. It's got all of the signatures that I've identified over the last six years. 
um, and and therefore there's a real means by which it is doing the transmutation. And, and Robert Temples, uh, you'll be interested. Somebody's done a, a thing starting with the, the sphere as well years ago. That that uh, Tesla sphere mm -hmm. uh, and talking about sentient thing. I sent it through to you. It's quite timely. Yeah. Right. The fact that the platform was sentient. Uh, it's really very, very, very good. Uh -huh. Okay, mate. Well, I'll keep that one. I, I wanted to. I wanted to tell you first and give you the first quick peeks before uh, anyone else gets to see it. So. That gives you the chance to get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't talk of you about you having sleep. I've had so little sleep in the last couple of days. It's just absurd. So. Remember, I was with uh, the CN till four a.m. morning. I I know you were. Know. Yeah. I, okay. All right. Well, it's it's not a peeing contest, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was. Okay. All right, cheers, Cheers, bye. Yeah. bye. Ah, uh, so Malcolm knows, <laughs> as he deserves to know. Same story. Oxygen, sulfur. It's like so perfect. Oxygen, sulfur, calcium. Done. Trace nitrogen. Every crystal's the same. And the iron ball is surprisingly iron ball. 56% iron by weight and 33% oxygen by weight. Uh, there we go. I think we've done this sample. So um, Just amazing. This, in theory, would have been where the original ball lining struck. That ball there, ball there, ball there, ball there, ball in there. Little ball, so yeah, it struck there and broke up and it went out. And these are the same kind of things you see with uh, Matsumoto, it's just amazing. We'll do one super duper high quality image of that. Let's see if I know. Uh, but I want to do SED, you can see a little bit more of the structure there, can't you? And the SED. Uh, we'll do an SED and then a we'll do a full Yeah, you can see over here, this ball is literally on the top uh, where it's in the main part of it. And this one here is actually on the substrate. So is this one on the substrate? This one's on the substrate. This one's at the end. This one's at the end. This one's just outside. So it's just come in, gone boom, and just go... Incredible.
actually, so this one is iron, that's iron, that's iron. So the iron ones are typically at the end, iron. Uh, but this one isn't iron. That one's iron that's on the top. Um, but this one is a sphere, but it's more like the carbon type, carbon oxygen structure. And you can imagine this occurring in like Iceland, and then that's where your sulfur's coming from, that's bubbling up out of the ground. I had the pleasure of witnessing that. Right, so we're going to do a mix here. I'm going to change the resolution to super stupid. I think what I'll do is I'll do some topological stuff on this area down here, or this area here, no, this area, to see the kind of height of these crystals. No, I'll do it here where we've got uh, a ball in there, or maybe here, that one kind of area. Of course, the, <laughs> the other interpretation is that this is a flow coming into the center, and then this is the launching point. But no, I think this is breaking up and coming out because we've got the small balls at the ends of all of these different runs here. Incredible.
Okay, so um, I'm going to have a look over here and I am going to, you can almost see that there is a little trail at the end of these trails with a potentially a carbon film, what I'm looking at there. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here and I want to kind of do some, yeah, you can see the little balls here. Ball, 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 ball. Okay, so I think what we will do is use a ball there. I think I'll just do a quick map of uh, this kind of area. Nothing's quick actually when it's a map. <laughs> Uh. Mm, it's getting charged today. image of that. Okay. Um, mm Hmm. Where's the silicon? Probably where the aluminium is. Uh, there we go. Silicon. Okay, there's your silicon balls. Yes. Yes, that was worth doing. Oh, my. So some of the balls are silicon. Ball silicon there, ball silicon there. Right? That is a fusion of carbon and oxygen. The aluminium, where's that? There's a big block of aluminium there. Wow. <laughs> Right, and then our iron, of course, is that ball there. Yeah, and yeah. So either silicon balls or iron balls. You know, like the silicon ball that was found by Slobodan Stankovic when he was doing his HHO on carbon, making silicon from carbon and iron from carbon. That is what this is doing! <laughs> It does the same thing every time. Well, the calcium is definitely there. 
The sulfur is definitely there. <laughs> the same story. Silicon spheres. Iron sphere. Wow, that is a very, very clear signature. Calcium, silicon, iron. Classic ball lightning synthesis products. And of course, double oxygen is sulfur. It's like literally perfect. <laughs> oh dear. Look where the calcium is. It's right where the sulfur is. And of course, the oxygen's everywhere. Wow. Hmm. Carbon in the background, mostly. Almost no carbon in here, really. That's the calcium and the sulfur, the oxygen. So this sphere here is a silicon one. You get silicon one, carbon ones, and, and uh, iron ones. Of course, the silicon has oxygen in it as well. If I turn the oxygen on. There you go, silicon dioxide. <laughs> Iron. Yeah. Cool. Right, well, that is that sample done, I think. Let's have a look at the inside. The outside of the inside. So inside of the outside. Save. Save. <clears throat> and I want to do one uh, geometry of this. So we will do this. So uh, did we save that one? I don't know where we did save that one, did we? We did save that one. Uh, close. Right, so we are going to do a scan on that. 
Lovely. Well, look at that. You can definitely see the height. It kind of comes up and it dumps more as it gets to the end. Yeah. There's our ball. <laughs> That's our silicon ball. This is our iron ball here. So, let's have a look at uh, can I shift that? How big is that structure there? That silicon ball is about three and a half microns across, and this one must be about the iron ball. And you can see it's a, definitely a different spherical size, about two microns across, I guess. Uh, and the profile across here is wibbly wobbly. There you go. How funkadiferous is that? Save. Onto the outside of the inside. This sample here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do next. Or a bit of it, anyway. <clears throat> so, thank you from very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. This was the first analysis of the eight year running. Uh, but only for hundreds of hours, not thousands of hours, it, across those eight years. Uh, thunderstorm generator, and it would appear that it is producing ball lightning, and there are signatures of uh, the process that I've observed through many different systems. And uh, this is uh, very, very interesting uh, and groundbreaking uh, in my view. So with that, I'll say thank you very much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.